Hello finance experts, I'm Nathan Waller and this is my financial analysis for Finance 653. <clears throat> for this analysis I did a time trend analysis and I evaluated short term, long term solvencies, um, leverage and profitability and then market value. For my first industry of the three I did packaged foods, for the second I did advertising and for the third industry, I did entertainment. For each industry, I picked five companies. For my packaged food industry, I picked Tyson, General Mills, Kellogg's, Pilgrim's Pride, and Sanderson Farms. For my advertising industry, I picked Lamar, Clear Channel Outdoors, Meredith Group, New Media Investments, and Outfront Media. For entertainment, I picked DreamWorks Animations, Walt Disney Company, Viacom, Time Warner, 21st Century Fox. So I'm going to go um, for each industry, I'm going to go head to head with two companies, and the winner or the company that I think is better is going to move on. And so we're going to start this off with Sanderson Farms versus Tyson. We're going to look at short term solvency. Right here is a graph of the current ratio. And as you can see, the current ratio is uh, substantially higher from 2012 to 2016 for Sanderson Farms over Tyson. We're going to look at current ratio. Current ratio for Tyson in 2016 has a uh, kind of a relatively level trend, and it's going to go from 1.91 in 2012 up to 1.77 or down to 1.77 in 2016. And uh, this trend's kind of seen throughout. The quick ratio is 0.68, the cash ratio is 0.13. Um, not terrible, but uh, not not anywhere as comparable to Sanderson Farms. With 2016, they have. Ratio and their cash ratio is much higher. Also, we're going to look at long term solvency and asset efficiency. Um, so, first, we're looking at the equity multiplier, which is how much the company is leveraged. And you can see here that uh, neither of them are uh, alarmingly high, but uh, the, the equity multiplier for Tyson, the, the leverage, is, is double that of Sanderson Farms. And we'll see if that's replicated in the ROE later on. Um, now we're going to have the tier, which is times interest earned. That's how much they can afford their interest payment from their debt with uh, their assets. And Tyson has 11.38. That's that's pretty healthy. Uh, Sanderson Farms has an incredibly high tier ratio, 172, um, and a cash coverage of 88. So that means they can cover their interest payment on their debt uh, 80 times over um, with cash alone. And then we're going to look at efficiencies using total asset turnover. Um, Sanderson Farms looks like it wins out here again. Um, now we're looking at profitability. Um, Tyson pays a little bit less in taxes. They do a little bit better, but they're very close. The interest burden, Sanderson Farms pays less interest for sure. They pay almost no interest. Um, their operating margins are a little bit better, so that shows us that their, um, their business side is maybe run more efficiently. And they, they're a little bit better at cost reduction. Their total asset turnover, we, uh, we went over that, it's a little better. And then on down to profit margin. The profit margin uh, is where Sanderson Farms is shining here. They're, they're doing better. And then um, ROA, they're doing better. The ROE is, is very close. However, if we look back at the equity multiplier, we see that Tyson is over double the, uh, double the is leveraged as Sanderson Farms. So I'm gonna go with Sanderson Farms on this one. Um, market value again. Tyson do, does a little bit better. They're they're a larger company and they're a little bit more diversified. But as far as security and what I'm going, what I'm looking for as a stockholder, I think I'm going to go with the Sanderson Farms, which is a very secure company. So who's better? I'm picking Sanderson Farms in this. One. Let's go Sanderson Farms versus Kellogg's. Uh, again, uh, Sanderson Farms is looking a lot better than Kellogg's here with their current ratio. Kellogg's has a, a very low current ratio. I'm not sure why. We're looking at long-term ratio now. Uh, the equity multiplier is, is 7.52. Not not too terribly high, but much higher than Sanderson Farms. Their times interest earned, they can afford their debt, um, but not in anywhere as compared to Sanderson Farms. Also, their total, total asset turnover is very low comparatively. Uh, as far as profitability goes, again, Kellogg's 
pays a little bit less in taxes, but one down the list, Sanderson Farms is doing a lot better. The ROE is, is higher for Kellogg's, but their equity multiplier is over seven times, which the ROE for, I mean, the, the equity multiplier for Sanderson Farms is a little over one. So uh, if, if Sanderson Farms would get as leveraged as, Anderson, as Kellogg's, who knows what their ROE could be. Next, we're going to look at the market value and supply chain. Um, we're going to look at market to book and EBA and a few other things. And it looks like Kellogg is a much better company um, in these aspects, which is something to look at. However, for my project, I'm going off of security, and I think that Sanderson Farmers is more secure. So we're going to go to Sanderson Farmers versus Jim. Pretty similar to Kellogg's here with their current ratio, pretty low. Uh, as far as cash coverage goes, they're looking okay. They're more leveraged than Sanderson Farms, and their asset turnover is not very high. Uh, this is what we're looking at now is profitability versus general, general mills and Sanderson Farms. Um, the operating margin is a little bit better than Sanderson Farms, which is surprising. It's been the first one so far. But uh, on down the list, Sanderson Farms is looking better. Uh, you know, they were all a little shaky in 2011, 2012, but I think that's because of the avian flu. Um, but since then, it looks like Sanderson Farms is more on a upward trend and doing a little bit better as far as the trend goes. All right, market value, um, economic value added. Again, General Mills is a much larger company, and uh, so they're higher there. But, and their weighted average cost of capital is lower, so they're able to get money cheaper. But Sanderson Farms wouldn't have any issue getting the loop. So I'm going to go with Sanderson Farms on this one again. Uh, other than market value, uh, Sanderson Farms is looking better. Pilgrim's Pride versus Sanderson Farms. So Pilgrim's Pride is probably the largest producer of poultry, and Sanderson Farms is in the top three. Very similar as far as what they actually produce. So we're looking here, and as we see, Sanderson Farms has a little bit better on the current ratio. Um, cash ratio is higher, cook ratio is higher. So they're doing a little bit better there. Now we're going to look at long-term solvency. Um, Pilgrim's Pride is a, is a little bit more leveraged. And their times interest earned and their cash coverage isn't nearly as high, but they do do a little bit better with their asset turnover, so they might be a little bit more efficient there. Pilgrim's Pride pays less in taxes, but not by much. That's probably because they're such a, so much of a larger company. And then, even still though, the profit margin is better on Pilgrim's Pride, and the ROE is higher, but it's because they're more leveraged. All right, so it looks like Sanderson Farms is gonna uh, take this one also. We're gonna go here, Lamar versus Clear Channel Holding. This is the outdoor advertising industry. Um, we're going to look at the current ratio. The current ratio uh, from 2012 to 2016 is pretty equivalent. Clear Channel actually wins out. So in long-term solvency, we're going to see who's, who's leveraged more. Clear Channel is far more leveraged than Lamar, and their time interest earned is also lower than Lamar's, and their cash coverage is also it's looking like uh, Lamar is the better company on this aspect. Their total asset turnover is too close to, to really call. They're very similar. They're both showing up or trend and they're very close. So we're gonna look at profitability. Um, Clear Channel has some shaky years here. They, and and uh, they kind of have some negative numbers, which is surprising. We don't really have all the information for them through 2016 for their ROE, but as we can see, it's negative um, in 2012. And they're they're more they have more equity. They're more much more leveraged. Um, the tax burden. They're paying a lot more taxes. So I'm really Lamar looks like a much much healthier company here. Uh, we don't really know what what the numbers look like for 2016 on Clear Channel, but we're gonna have to go with with Lamar on this one. Um, again, on market value, Lamar takes the cake. Their economic value added is much higher and uh, their market to book is much higher. So we're gonna go Lamar versus Meredith Group. All 
right? On this one, Lamar does look better. Meredith Group is pretty similar across the board, except their cash. Their cash ratios are very low, but so is so is Lamar's. That's probably due to the fact that they're outdoor advertising industry, and they have a lot of fixed assets. So long-term solvency and efficiency. Um, Lamar does better with their equity multiplier. They're less le they're they're less leveraged, and now we're looking at asset turnover. And Meredith actually does a little bit better than than Lamar on that. So. We'll see what the profitability looks like. All right, tax burden. Lamar does better on the tax burden. They pay substantially less taxes. I don't know what Meredith's, Meredith's issue is here, but they're paying a lot more taxes than any other company we've seen so far. And um, as far as ROE goes, even though they're very similarly leveraged, Lamar takes the cake. They're, they're doing a lot better. They're a lot healthier company than Meredith right now. Um, the profit margin is insane compared to Meredith. I mean, 2% two, two profit margin versus 19%. Lamar's doing something right in this industry. Uh, market value again, EVA for Meredith. I mean, they have a negative EVA. So that's not looking too healthy versus an EVA of 162 over here for Lamar. So I'm going to have to go with Lamar on this one. All right, now we're going to go um, new media. This is the profitability for new media versus Lamar. And short-term solvency, we have a current ratio is a little shaky on, on the media side, but they do look a little bit better across the board. Um, we'll see what the long-term solvency looks like. So Lamar is more leveraged, so the new media takes the cake on this one, but their cash coverage has some, some negative years here, so I would be surprised to see what the uh, profitability looks like. Here we go. Here's the profitability versus Lamar and New Media. Tax, the tax burden looks better for New Media. However, it's over one, so that's telling me that they're getting a tax rebate. So that is oftentimes uh, an identifier that it might not be the healthiest company because why would the, the government try to quote unquote bail them out if they were doing well? Um, and asset turnover is very similar, but it looks like New Media does a little bit better with them. Um, however, the ROEs are not even comparable. Uh, you know, for 2012, they have a negative ROA on the new media side, and they go down and up and down and up to 2.5 in 2016. That's pretty low versus an 8.23 year. Uh, I'm going to have to go with Lamar just uh, because of the data available and the numbers tell me that it looks like a much better company. So we're going to look at market value. Um, Price to earnings ratio, across the board down the list, Lamar it looks like a much better company to invest in here. Uh, you know, sometimes people want to to buy in when it's low and, and go and ride the train up, but uh, I would be a little bit skeptical due to the fluctuations in their numbers. So now we're going to look at the Lamar versus Outfront Media. All right, very similar on the current ratio, um, very close. It would be tough for me to tell you that one is better than the other, but out front is a little bit higher. So we're going to look at long-term solvency. We don't really have all the numbers for out front, unfortunately, but it looks like the cash coverage and the times interest earned is much better for Lamar, and their asset turnover is really too close to call. As far as <clears throat> profitability goes, out front does a little bit better on taxes. They pay almost no taxes, which Again, that can be sometimes a concern because uh, they both have numbers like like uh, huge rebates on taxes here from, from 2014. So I'm not really sure how healthy that, that shows that they are. And then down here, if we're looking at the ROA and the ROE, um, Outfront actually has a negative ROE in 2015 and then a positive 7.43 in 2016. I don't want to ride this fluctuating train. Like I would, if I'm an investor, I want something that has steady growth, and I'm not seeing it from out for me. So, all right, now we're looking at market value and supply chain. Um, market value for Lamar does look better. They have a little bit price to better price to earning from out front, which is surprising to me. Maybe analysts think that they're going to do better in the future, but uh, I'm not seeing it right now. So I'm going to have to go with. 
right, the next industry we're going to go over is DreamWorks versus Disney. I'll give you a little description of it. DreamWorks Animation uh, develops and produces computer-generated animated feature films for a broad movie-going audience. And Walt Disney is an entertainment company that conducts operations in media networks, studio entertainment, theme parks and resorts, consumer products, and interactive media. The company produces motion pictures, television programs, and musical recordings, as well as books and magazines. So we're gonna look at short-term solvency here. Uh, DreamWorks looks a little bit better, uh, some of it. Uh, so if we're looking here, we can see the cash coverage is a lot higher on Disney, but their current, the current ratio is probably the only thing DreamWorks is better at in Disney. But that doesn't tell you everything, because when you look at the times interest earned and the cash coverage, uh, Disney really, really pulls away there. Okay, now we're looking at DreamWorks. We don't have all the data on DreamWorks, so I'm going to have to go with Disney on this one. But the asset turnover is also higher for Disney. Uh, now we're looking at profitability. 